Hello everyone, and now let's go over the quotient rule. So if you have a function f, which is a quotient of two equations, u of x over v of x. So if you have a function that is the quotient of two things, what rule do you use? Well, you use the quotient rule. So if f is u over x, then f prime is u prime times v minus u times v prime, all that over v squared. So uh, one thing to notice here when you're trying to remember these formulas is that the numerator is really similar to the product rule, but you have a minus instead of a plus in between. And then if you start with a quotient, it ends with a quotient. So you just have to remember that you have v prime. Uh, uh, you, have, you have a denominator and that denominator is over v squared, sorry. So anyways, uh, as usual, I think the trick here is the first few examples, you do it the long way, you label your numerator as u, the denominator as v, you compute u prime and v prime separately, and then you combine the four functions with the quotient rule. Let's go with an example. Uh, suppose uh, f of x is ex over x squared plus one. So we have the quotient of two things, so let's use the quotient rule. So the numerator is going to be u, so in this case here we have ex, and the denominator is x squared plus one, so that's going to be v. Then you compute u prime, the of ex, that's a bit boring, but it's ex again. And for v prime, you're going to get 2x plus zero, or just 2x. And then you combine the four functions, so it's u prime, so ex times v, which is x squared plus one, minus u, which is ex times v prime, which is 2x. And all that over v squared, so over x squared plus 1 squared. And you don't need to simplify, leave it like this. This will clearly show that you understand how to use the quotient rule. Okay, so unless you're using like these derivatives for some application, if the question is just compute the derivative, like don't simplify, okay, sometimes the more, some, if you play too much with your function, the more you play with it, the more likely you're going to mess it up. So, okay, move away from the answer. Okay, so that's going to be accepted, okay, on the, on the test. So anyway, so let's do another example. Suppose f of x is x minus one over x plus one, so the quotient of two things. So the numerator is going to be x minus one, so that's going to be u, and v is going to be the denominator, x plus 1. So let's compute the derivative of x minus 1. That's just 1. It's just a linear function. And v prime, it's also 1. So u prime is 1 times v, which is x plus 1, minus u, which is x minus 1, times v, which is 1. All that over v squared, so x plus 1 squared. So again, you could leave it like this, but here you can actually simplify. If you multiply by one, you're going to get for the numerator, x plus one minus x minus x plus one. So you're just going to get two over x plus one squared. Nice. Okay, so you're going, uh, so again, here, label your u, label your v, compute your u prime and your v prime and combine the four functions with the quotient rule. More, 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 scream, scream the peasant. So, okay, okay, so next equation will be very important because this will be our first step towards um, having a list of derivatives for all the trig functions. We know that of sine is cosine and cosine is minus sine, but about tangent, cotangent, and all the other ones. Well, tangent is going to be done by using, of course, the quotient rule, because if you want to differentiate tan, so minus example here, which is sine over cos, I'm going to do it using the quotient rule. So if we have sine over cos, so the numerator is sine, so that's going to be my u, my denominator is cosine, that's going to be my v. Now let's compute u prime, the derivative of sine is cosine. And then for v prime, the derivative of cosine is minus sine. Now let's combine the four functions. So u prime, so you get cos of x times v, which is cos of x again, minus u, which is sine, times v prime, which is minus sine of x, all that over v squared, which is cos of x squared. Of course, you could leave it like this, but in this question, it's going to be interesting when you simplify the actual formula. So at the numerator, cos times cos will be cos squared of x. Then you have minus sine times minus sine, that's going to become plus sine 
squared, all that over cos squared, and of course, cos squared plus sine squared, that's just one, over cos squared, and cos squared, one over cos by definition is secant, so you're going to get secant squared. And actually, from now on, if you have to differentiate tan, you have two options. You can either, you can either compute the derivative of tan by using the quotient rule, like I just did, or learn it as a new formula, a new basic formula that the derivative of tan is secant squared, and that's going to be accepted. You don't need to go through, you don't need to go through uh, the details of the quotient rule. If you just remember it, I'll be super happy. Okay, so, and as an exercise here, uh, use the quotient rule, okay, use the quotient rule to prove that the derivative of cotan is minus cosecant squared. Okay, so it's very, very similar to the derivative of tan. So you use the, 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 um, the quotient rule, you simplify, and then you're going to get, okay, minus cosecant squared. And again, same remark for, for co cotangent. Either you get the derivative of cotangent of x by using the quotient rule, by using u to be cosine and v to be sine, or you just remember it, and every time you see a cotangent and you have to differentiate it, you just use minus secant, cosecant squared right away. Okay, so it's up to you. It's a personal question. All right, let's go and do uh, more examples. And here the idea is the following. Like one of the trick, trickier part of computing derivatives is not to apply a basic rule or a product rule or a quotient rule, but it's when you are using a rule, sometimes you have to use either the same rule or another rule, and which rule do you use first? This is where the complexity behind these questions can kick in. Okay, so the next few examples, we're going to combine product and quotient rule and then um, and to get to our final answer. So the next question is compute the derivative of 3x minus 1 over x sine of x. So here we have the product, sorry, the quotient of two things. We have 3x plus minus 1 as the numerator, and we have x times sine of x as the denominator. So here u is 3x minus 1, v is x sine of x. So when you're computing u prime, you have a linear function here, you just get 3, but when you're computing v prime, we have the product between x and sine of x, so you need to use a product rule. So here quickly, if you differentiate x sine of x times sine of x, so you're going to get the derivative of the first one, so 1 times sine of x plus the first one times the derivative of the second one, the derivative of sine is cosine. So when you're comfortable with the product rule, this is how you write it very quickly. So when you are writing f prime using the quotient rule, so you do u prime first times v, so x sine of x, minus u, so u which is like 3x minus 1 times v prime, which is 1 simplified, sine of x plus x cos of x, and all that over v squared, which is x sine of x squared. No need to simplify. This is as clean as I want it. Okay, so here, of course, the point of this example is within the, so it was, it is a quotient rule first. This is a quotient of two things. But within the computation of V prime, we had a product rule. So a lot of people think that once you've, you know, like understood the, the, the first rule, then ever, anything goes after. But when you're computing U prime and V prime, it's basically a question into a, in a question. Uh, you any rule can go. So if you have basic terms, like most of the questions we did so far, but if you have a product or another quotient, you still have to use the product rule and the quotient rule. So let's do another example like this. So last example for uh, a combination of product rule and quotient rule. So suppose we have ex, uh, x times ex minus ex over x ln of x minus x. So it's a quotient of two things again. So I have a numerator. I have a denominator, I'm going to call my numerator u x e x minus e x, and my denominator x ln of x minus x, I'm going to call it v. So when you're going to compute u prime, you're going to get, of course, u prime in here. This is where you have to be careful. 
So this is the product. The first term is the product of two terms. So you have to use a product rule. So you're going to get one, so the, the derivative of the first one times EX plus the first one times the derivative of the second one, the derivative of EX is EX minus the derivative of EX, which is EX again. So remember these two chunk here, that's the result of the product rule. And if you simplify this, you get EX minus EX, they cancel each other, you just get X EX for U prime. And now for V prime, it's the same thing, X multiplies ln of X, so you need a product rule here. So you get one times ln of X plus uh, X times the derivative of ln of X, which is one over X, minus the derivative of X, which is just minus one, this is a linear part. So these two terms here, that's the result of the product rule. And if you simplify your thing a bit, so one times ln of X, that's just ln of X. X times one over X is just one minus one, okay, so you're simplifying this to ln of X, and that's your V prime. V prime is just ln of X. Funny remark here, well, it's not that funny, but, <laughs> We just found a function x ln of x minus x is a function such that its derivative is ln of x. Pretty cool, eh? Anyways, I'm a loser. Okay, so anyway, so now when I'm uh, applying the quotient rule to get f prime, so you're getting u prime first, which is x ex times v, which is x ln of x minus x minus u, which is x ex minus ex times v prime, which is ln of x all that over um, v squared, so x ln of x minus x squared. And that's it, and again here, I cannot stress enough the fact that uh, when you're computing u prime and v prime, you have to look at it as a brand new question, don't make up new rules, a product will be, uh, you, you will deal with a product with a product rule, you will deal with a quotient with a quotient rule. Anyways, for that section, okay, on the product and quotient rule, that's it, that's all. We're going to move on to the last rule, which is a chain rule. All right, anyways, bye-bye,